Good morning and happy Friday, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for August 9th, 2019. Well, we started off this week really wild, and it looks like we're going to end this week really wild. As it, the possibility of our two-day rally may be reaching an end uh, this morning. We see quite a little bit of turmoil in the futures this morning. And let's talk about what's going on here. Well, first off, the some of the major concerns out there is the 2 and 10-year bonds are inching closer and closer together for that possible inversion. And a lot of people look at um, if they do invert, if the two, the two is obviously much more sensitive to um, market concerns than the tenure. And if they were to invert, um, then we end up in a situation that a lot of people look at as a signal of recession. And they continue to just converge on each other. They're getting closer and closer and closer and closer uh, for that possible inversion. Then we have this fluctuation that continues. China, um, um, once again, uh, made an adjustment to the yuan and actually set, um, they have a kind of a benchmark for the yuan right around seven. And they actually set the midpoint for the one just below seven that's creating some currency fluctuations this morning a little bit of fears here and there um, running around and so the trade war tensions you add this uh, possibility of yield inversion coming as we head into the weekend there is obviously a lot of uncertainty and a lot of unknowns so Let's take a look at the charts and see if we can kind of figure out what we should expect here. Um, first off, this morning, it looks like the Dow is going to gap down. Um, it's been down uh, as much as 150 points. At this very moment, the Dow is looking to gap down. Well, actually, it's moved a little bit lower, 160 points. So it's been bouncing around in here. So pretty uncomfortable morning for a lot of folks if you didn't take profits on your um relief rally trades yesterday taking a look at what we've got going on here if we look at our moving averages our dow moved up very very sharply and moving up toward that 50-day moving average and this is exactly the place we want to start watching for that possibility of a failure if we happen to get that failure pattern in here could set up some short trading and more downside in the market this is what we call um, uh, in hit and run candlesticks and right way options as a blue ice failure that's that failure through the 50 rally back to test as resistance and then we're watching for that possibility of additional selling coming in and you can see that's a fairly common pattern we break down rally back and then continue that breakdown so it, it happens an awful lot in the market and that blue ice failure could be setting up here at the moment. Um, unfortunately, we have, you know, our shorter term averages pushing back down, um, maybe providing this uh, zone of resistance up here. And if we continue with these global fears that we have right now, that does not bode well for the market right here in this condition. So kind of keep that in mind. Now, if we do start selling off, First off, we want to watch uh, these lows down here to potentially hold. And if you look back here at the moving averages, that's down around here, around the 200-day moving average. We do have, um, obviously, some levels in here that could hold much you know, sooner than that. If we pull back into here, there's some price levels that could hold... Uh, hold us and let's hope those cooler heads do prevail here but we were pushing against some really substantial technical damage now in the charts and that may be difficult to push through unless we start getting some certainty in some of these um, issues that are out there around trade and and rates and and all this uh, bond manipulation that's kind of going on right now so a little bit of concern here as we head into the weekend for the market let's Let's take a look at the SPY 
SPY is also looking to pull back th this morning. Now, it had a beautifully strong day yesterday, just rallying nonstop throughout the day and even broke above its 50-day moving average. Now, the key is, can we hold that 50-day average as, as support? And so far this morning, we're gapping back down below that. Let's see if those bulls can come back in and fight back and defend. We'll have to watch this pretty darn closely um, as we move into this weekend. I would think that the uncertainty of the weekend could put some pressure um, on the market. Also notice that we have a rather significant price resistance here in the chart that we're trying to deal with. And that price resistance is commonly going to, um, after such a major technical damage, um, happened in the chart. And unless something completely changes, if we get <clears throat> certainty coming back into the market, we resolve something in the trade war, things start to improve, we get, um, you know, better clarification from the FOMC, any of those things could really change thing, change it. But as of right now, nothing has really changed. We did get that nice little relief rally, and now we should expect some rest, consolidation, or even a pullback to occur here in the market. And we'll have to watch that pretty closely as we bang our head against those price resistance levels. If we take a look at the Qs, now the Qs are incredibly strong yesterday, moving up confidently, breaking through that 50-day moving average. But I want you to notice we've done that before, where we break down, break back through that 50-day moving average, and still get that failure. So as we rally up here and this morning gap down certainly um, uh, crushes some of that confidence that we're going to move right on through these resistance points. We'll have to watch this pretty closely and see if that breakdown begins to occur here. Let's hope not, but it is certainly possible. And if we do start selling off, let's look to levels like right in here for that first support, second support in here. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the blue ice failure has a tendency of doing this. We move on down and test the 200-day moving average. So if that failure begins to occur here, we could see that NASDAQ and even the SPY back down here around the that 200-day moving average, testing those levels. So some uncertainty here to deal with um, in the market. Let's take a look at IWM. Now, IWM moved up very, very sharply yesterday, showing lots of confidence and strength, breaking back above its 200-day moving average. And then once again, it's looking to gap a little bit lower this morning. And underneath that 50-day moving average, notice we have all of our shorter term averages and lots of price congestion right through this area to create that zone of price resistance here. So we'll have to see, we're gonna need something to change, I think, to break us back up through there. And overall, IWM has been in a long-term downtrend and that is also working against this um, beleaguered index. So watch that closely. Let's take a look at the VIX. VIX has pulled back nicely, and yesterday we just got that sharp decline here in the VIX, pulling back, getting that rest. Now here comes the concern. The concern, and you guys have heard me talk about this over and over and over, we break back, we break above this downtrend. If we break um, higher on fear, we pull back and we hold this area in here as support, either above this support area or above its downtrend. If we hold that area of support, we could see that fear begin to spike back up. So let's watch that closely. That could get that really quick selling coming into the market if that fear really raises its ugly head here. Well, we've seen that before. We, we move up, we hold that higher low, that downtrend, we hold it as support, and bam, we move to the upside. So let's watch that pretty closely here. Um, the real concern in the market would be if the selling, if we fail at these resistance levels and that selling starts to come in, and that will be the real concern where the real selling could get pretty extreme. So watch that closely. Hopefully that doesn't occur, and I'm certainly not trying to predict that in any way, shape, or form, just to watch for that possibility, okay? Be aware that selling could resume, and it could come in pretty strong if that fear starts to creep up.
So watch it close. Let's take a look at T2122, that four week new high, new low ratio. Kind of interesting um, how quickly that two day rally has taken us from that bearish reversal zone down in here and really moved us up sharply. Um, all of a sudden, you know, just in two days, um, uh, bouncing uh, back substantially. So if what this does tell us is that we still have room that we could move to the upside. So we can't rule out the possibility that those bulls will come in defend and defend today and try to push us up, maybe finish this week on the bull on a bullish note. But if those bears are up here in that resistance area ready to defend, um, let's also kind of keep in mind there is that little bit of a downtrend here in T2122 where we could see that push back down and we obviously have a significant um, space to the downside that we'll have to watch for. Futures continue to fluctuate around. Um, probably not a big surprise that we're going to see more volatility today. Right now, the Dow futures have bounced back up. We're only down 143 points. So we're flip-flopping pretty quickly um, during the morning. There's a lot of tension here, a lot of volatility. Who knows how this will actually play out. We're just going to have to really stay on our toes and be really, really careful. Let's take a look at our economic calendar. Economic calendar has a couple things. Well, one thing that could move the market around today, and that's that PPI number. Comes out at 8.30 this morning. Keep an eye on that. After that, really not much of anything to be concerned about or worry about. We have just over 100 companies reporting earnings today. Uh, the majority of those earnings happen to be small caps. So there's not anything out there that's, you know, that big name report uh, that's going to move the market around significantly. So we're going to be, <clears throat> in, in a lot of ways, left to our own devices here. <clears throat> and with the vast majority of earnings season now complete, <clears throat> The market's going to have to face its fears about um, the economic conditions um, in, in around the world, uh, these inversions uh, that could be possible, the, um, and the trade war tensions are really gonna, going to become higher in focus at, as we've kind of completed the vast majority, <clears throat> excuse me, of this earnings season. So... Let's um, focus in on um, this price action. Stay very, very diligent to our price action. Be careful not to just assume anything because this volatility is so high. Anything, I, I think anything is possible. Um, we could see those bulls step up and fight real hard and push the market back up. We could see those bears come in uh, with a vengeance um, after this relief rally. Uh, because of the price resistance in that chart and really push us lower if those fears start to creep up. So lots of things to try and consider and keep our head around. Uh, remember next week we still have earnings. So we're going to have those earnings reports coming through next week. Um, we don't have um, uh, nearly as many as, as we've had the last couple of weeks. And as a matter of fact, there's only a couple of days where we actually reach into the triple digits numbers. And then earnings really begin to fall off after that. So keep that in mind. Um, we're going to be kind of left to focus on the, the details of the trade war and the concerns um, on, on global growth. Um, so the market's going to have to confront that directly. Um, over the next uh, couple of weeks. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day, and I want to wish you great profits. I also want to wish you an awesome, awesome weekend. Um, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, do me a favor. Click that subscribe button on YouTube. Also, when, when you click that sub subscribe button, there'll be a pop-up that comes up. Make sure you click that bell icon so that you'll be notified when I post one of these videos. With now over 600 videos on YouTube, there's lots of free information for folks to take advantage of. If you find those videos to be particularly helpful, could you also do me a favor and share those on your social media platform? Just take that video link and share it on Facebook, share it on uh, Twitter, and help other folks uh, find this information if you found it helpful. Also, if you find this video to be to be uh, 
uh, useful and helpful, please do me a favor, click that thumbs up button and leave a brief comment. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. And, and by the way, I truly appreciate those who, who take the time to write out um, a, a, a nice um, uh, uh, comment on the videos. I, my gosh, the, uh, some of the things that you guys write makes me uh, feel 10 foot tall and bulletproof. Um, which I am not. <laughs> um, they're very, very humbling. Um, and so thank you very much to all of you who take the time to do that. You guys are the best. I truly appreciate that. So with that, let's take a look at some of the stocks that could be moving around. Now we're going to have to start focusing here next week on some short trades and um, some trades that you might want to um, consider right now is something that we did in right way options yesterday and that is <clears throat> taking some hedging trades we put on some um, bear call credit spreads yesterday to hedge against the possibility of a down move but there are stocks out there looking really good and still holding up very very strong for possible uh, moves to the upside take a look at that starbucks chart beautiful trending chart here in starbucks trying to lift back up and break this um this is a little j hook what, what we call a j hook pattern which requires the stock to move up substantially and then we get that nice modest pullback and we start hooking right back up to the upside Starbucks looking really good. I would keep that on my list. Nice pattern and um, want to really focus on that chart uh, for potential trades here in the near future. Um, WDC, um, WDC, I've been watching this chart for a while and unfortunately this market turmoil broke the trend here on this chart. I think WDC needs to break back above this support level here and then prove that we can hold. If we can break back above uh, there, hold that area as support, then I would be looking for WDC to move higher. If it can do that, I don't wanna be buying it right here because of that possibility of failure. And if you notice, if it does fail here, take a look at the possibility of that head and shoulders top. So this is one of those that could go either direction <clears throat> and we're going to need to watch that pretty closely. But WDC, um, right now looking pretty good. <clears throat> we had huge recoveries in <clears throat> some of the tech stocks yesterday. There was news from AMD that their chipsets are being used, are, are starting to pick up wide, widely being used in servers and things like that. It's a, it's a brand new chipset <clears throat> that is beating speed records and power requirements and all kinds of stuff. And um, AMD just soared on that news yesterday. Now, I wouldn't chase this move. In any way, shape, or form, I wouldn't chase this move. And as you can see, <clears throat> it is gapping down this morning. So what I would want to do is I'd want to watch and wait for the next potential entry into this trade. If um, we can get more of that J-hook or that uh, pullback opportunity where that stock just rests and consolidates a little bit and then moves on higher. So keep an eye on AMD. Maybe coming around to be a, um, a strong performer in the market. So keep an eye on that um, with the good news surrounding that stock. Another stock you guys know that I have been talking about <coughs> for a potential up move, and it went yesterday, is Restoration Hardware. Restoration Hardware finally breaking through, moving through in that trend, looking really good, really strong, holding up quite well. We also saw good moves in like Microsoft. Microsoft, I had, I had suggested the possibility of a uh, bull put credit spread to members of RWO. Um, they are substantially higher on that trade just in one day. Uh, we picked it, uh, picked it up yesterday while we were uh, still low here on uh, Microsoft and off to the races to the upside. So we're looking really good here at Microsoft. Once again, I wouldn't chase this for a directional long position until I get a little bit of rest, a little bit of consolidation, a little bit of pullback, maybe even move us over to this longer term trend. See if we can catch that rest in here and then take that next move up. Remember, Microsoft reported really strong earnings and um, 
just got punished heavily in this market sell-off. So with that, everyone, hey, I know this has been a tough, tough market. Remember, you don't have to trade this market. Um, one of the things that <clears throat> I always like to say is you don't have to trade every single day to be successful. What we have to do is look for our opportunities and carefully watch those off for those opportunities and um, make sure that we're maintaining an edge in the market. If you don't feel you have an edge, if you don't feel that you are getting um, good entries and exits because of the volatility of this market, it's probably a wise idea to just step back and protect that capital. The market will be here tomorrow and next week and the week after that. And after it calms down, your edge may return. So just remember, not every day um, is it required to uh, to trade to be successful at trading. Um as a matter of fact, I will tell you in times like this, um, it's often better uh, to do less. Less is more. And if we can remove some of those losing trades from our win-loss ratio by trying to battle the market with all this volatility, all of a sudden we notice our win-loss ratio improves dramatically. We have more winning trades and losing trades. And even though we're trading less, our accounts growing and that's what we need to do as traders that's our job is to make money not lose money so keep that in mind everyone i want to wish you all a fantastic weekend i appreciate you all being here everyone take care we'll see you right back here bright and early monday morning have a good one